Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today is the first part of kind of a two-part piece of content, uh, which is a sort of DIY version of a Lush product, which is their Sleepy Lotion. I've had a lot of requests for a DIY version of this product of theirs. And so today we're going to talk about how I take a look at that uh, ingredients list that's on their websites and on their products, and how I'm turning it into the recipe that we will be making in a couple days. So come on, let's get started. All right, so here are the ingredients in the original. You can see we have oatmeal infusion, almond oil, lavender water, a lavender infusion, jojoba oil, glycerin, cocoa butter, stearic acid, lipe butter, triethanolamine, lavender oil, benzoin resinoid, tonka absolute, ylang ylang oil, cetyl alcohol, fragrance, and a snowflake luster, which is mostly gonna be for shimmer and color, and then we have some more uh, color at the end, the red 28 and the blue one. And so this, you can see because it does have both water and oil in there, it's an emulsion, it's a lotion. We know from kind of looking at their website and seeing pictures of it that it's a reasonably thick and creamiest lotion. And, and yeah, let's see how we can break this down a little further. We have our water part, of course, and so that's going to be the oatmeal infusion, the lavender water, the lavender infusion, and the glycerin. And so this lotion is going to be mostly water, which is uh, consistent with sort of most <laughs> lotions. They're usually mostly water, uh, what makes them nice and light and absorb quickly and you know, hydrating. Uh, so all of those things, with the exception of the glycerin, are pretty much entirely water with just tiny amounts of botanical matter, of like oats or lavender uh, that have been included or the um, lavender hydrosol, which is a byproduct of essential oil distillation. So these things are, yeah, like 99.5, 99.9% water, which is a little bit of something extra so that the ingredient label doesn't really say water, but there is a lot of water in here. Our oil phase, of course, is the almond oil, the jojoba oil, the cocoa butter, and the alipe butter and then down towards the bottom, the satiral alcohol. And so we have all of these beautiful things in there, but you can see it's mostly gonna be mostly almond oil because the almond oil is in front of two of the types of water. So there's quite a lot of almond oil in there, mostly liquid oils, touch of butters, which will help with the thickening, and so will the satiral alcohol. Our emulsifier is the stearic acid and the triethanolamine. This is a sort of an older school emulsifier. It's usually about two parts stearic acid to one part triethanolamine, and that creates sort of a soap that emulsifies lotions, which is neat. We're not gonna do it that way, but that's why those ingredients are in there. And then the stearic acid is also going to contribute some thickening. The scent is coming from the lavender, benzoin, tonka, lang lang, and fragrance. And so benzoin, and Tonka are both quite vanilla-like, sweet and warm and very reminiscent of vanilla. Lang Lang I find to be extremely sweet and floral, quite cloying. Fragrance is a complete, who knows what that's supposed to, like there's no way to know what that smells like from looking at the ingredients list. You'd have to smell the actual product and kind of know what the scents of the lavender, benzoin, Tonka, and Lang Lang were bringing and then sort of figure out what you know, what the fragrance was filling in. Um, so we're gonna kind of forget about that because that's sort of an unknown element and we can't really do a lot with it. So let's start creating our phases from the original, from what we've just looked at. So for our water phase, we're going to do mostly distilled water with some lavender hydrosol. And then instead of the oatmeal infusion, we're going to include some hydrolyzed oat protein and some colloidal oats, uh, which kind of you know, gives us some oat bits, but without, like an oatmeal infusion would be a very, very difficult thing to preserve. And then we're of course including some glycerin for its lovely humectant properties. Our oil phase will be mostly almond oil, of course, with jojoba oil and cocoa butter and some stearic acid rounding it out. We're not using the stearic acid as an emulsifier here though, we're using it simply as a thickener and it gives this lotion a really nice, rich, thick consistency. For emulsifying, we're going to be using some polo wax, which is a nice, complete emulsifying wax that's really, really easy to use. For scent, I've simplified it down to just lavender and benzoin. So we're already getting some lavender notes from the inclusion of a lavender hydrosol in the water part. And so we're adding a little bit more lavender essential oil and then some benzoin resinoid, which gives us that nice vanilla note. If you like ylang ylang, you can definitely include some. I, I would suggest fairly little, like less than 0.1% um, because it's so far down the ingredients list. I personally can't stand it, so I won't be including it, but it is, as you can see, a part of the original. And then um, the fragrance is kind of just, yeah, as I said, we have no idea what that's doing there, so um, we'll leave it out. It smells really good as is though. 
I did decide to jump on the making this slightly purple boat with the inclusion of a nice sort of soft lavendery colored purple mica and so that kind of takes up the snowflake luster and the red 28 and the blue one roll and gives the final product just an ever so slightly purpley hue. So now that we have a list of ingredients that we know we're going to be using, let's talk about how we know how much of each one we're going to use. Now water we're going to use at QS or quantity sufficient is what we're going to use to top the recipe up to 100%. So we'll just sort of leave that for now. So our next ingredient is lavender hydrosol. I find that hydrosols contribute really lovely scent at 20% and we don't want to use too, too much of them because they do present a bit of a preservation hurdle. So 20% is a good usage rate for hydrosols. For the oaty things in place of the oatmeal infusion, we're using 2% of hydrolyzed oat protein, which is within the recommended usage rate for hydrolyzed oat protein. And then we are using 1% colloidal oatmeal. Glycerin is at 2% because too, too much glycerin gets sticky and nobody likes a sticky lotion. When I'm thinking about an oil phase, the first thing I need to decide is how big I want that oil phase to be because that really impacts the viscosity and the feel and the absorbency speed of the lotion. You can use the lightest oils in the world, but if you have a 50% oil phase, that lotion's going to be quite heavy compared to a lotion using heavier oils, but that only has maybe a 15% oil phase. And so this lotion is a 23.75% oil phase, which will give us a lotion that is too thick for a pump bottle, but not too heavy. So it's just a nice, rich, sort of scoopable, spreadable, lovely lotion. So this is this is sort of the percentage that we are working with. So from there, we know how much emulsifier we need. And so Polo Wax works well, works beautifully at 25% of your oil phase, which is just a wonderful thing about Polo Wax, a wonderful little rule of thumb when you're formulating. And so that is 4.75 grams of our oil phase, and now we have 19 grams of oil left. So if we know we have 19 grams and we know that almond oil is our top oil, call that 10 grams. And then we have jojoba oil, so make that five. And then for cocoa butter and stearic acid, I just did two grams and two grams of each. So there is our oil phase. Now all that's left is our cool down phase. So that is our essential oils, our preservative and our mica. The mica doesn't strictly have to be in the cool down phase, but it's an easy place to add it right at the end. And so for our essential oils, we have lavender and benzoin. Because we already have a pretty good amount of lavender scent coming from the lavender hydrosol, I've kept the amount of lavender essential oil quite low. And then the benzoin, oh, it's gorgeous. It just, mm, at half a percent really gives a beautiful, warm, sweet loveliness. A quarter of a percent of mica gives this lotion a nice color in the container, but it doesn't dye your hands. And then a half percent of liquid dermal plus is the maximum recommended usage rate. So that is what we are using. Uh, it is worth noting that this original doesn't appear to be preserved which is weird, but I know Lush has sort of a subline of self-preserving formulas. So I guess we can kind of assume that that has to be what is going on here because there's no way they're selling this product without uh, testing it for shelf stability and ensuring that it is safe to use. So they are a huge company and I don't think <laughs> they would wish to invite a lawsuit, but definitely uh, don't assume that you can uh, make this without a preservative even though it looks like they have. All right, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you in a couple days when we're making this product. It's gonna pop up here on YouTube and on the blog and we'll have the full DIY guide for you so you can see how to transform this list of ingredients into a beautiful, final, finished, creamy, lovely product. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.